Hello everyone, I'm Jensen, your digital content producer. It is Tuesday, September 1st, and I'm about to get you all caught up on today's top headlines. So today we're gonna to take a look at Governor Mike DeWine's latest coronavirus press conference, plus what you need to know about the payroll tax deferral that goes into effect today. But before we dive too deep into any of those stories, I wanna get you up to speed on the latest coronavirus data from the state. So numbers were up across the board today. DeWine attributed this to universities and K-12 schools making their return to campus. In the last 24 hours, there were 1,453 new cases of the virus reported, a big jump from the 21-day average of 1,037. Coronavirus-related deaths were also up with 27 reported today compared to the average of 22. There have also been 103 new hospitalizations and 14 ICU admissions, with those averages coming in at 82 and 13, respectively. Putnam County topped the list today of the counties with the most cases per 100,000 people. DeWine said that the county has 233.3 cases per 100,000, which is well above the CDC threshold of 100 for high level of spread. Henry County dropped down the list, though, but they do remain in the top 10 at 6, with 192.5 cases per 100,000. And Governor Mike DeWine expressed concern over the upcoming Labor Day weekend, making note of a trend of seeing a spike in cases following previous holiday weekends. In the weeks after the 4th of July, the state averaged close to 1,500 cases per day. State leaders believe this was in large part because of parties and other gatherings. And this is just one example from DeWine demonstrating large spread from that weekend. A family and a friend drove 40 minutes in a car together to the lake. The friend had coronavirus at the time, but wasn't aware of it. This chart from the Ohio Department of Health shows the spread from this person to the family and then to people outside of that trip. The governor has attributed a lot of the spread throughout the state to casual gatherings. So if you do plan to celebrate this weekend, keep everything small, hopefully within your bubble. Keep a distance away from people and wear a mask if you can't keep that distance. Celebrate outside if the weather's nice. It's probably your plan anyway that will greatly reduce the spread. And of course, wash your hands. Don't forget to wash your hands frequently. And the Ohio State University Wexner Medical Center is looking for 500 adults for a clinical trial of a COVID-19 vaccine. Representatives with the hospital said the Wexner Center will be part of a multi-center 30,000 person study for this particular vaccine. The study is looking for people who have a higher risk of exposure to the virus like teachers, first responders, college students, factory workers, restaurant employees, and people 65 or older. People who participate in the double-blind study will either receive the vaccine or a placebo, and they'll have blood drawn and follow up with doctors for two years. If you'd like to volunteer, there's a link to the application on our website right now, and that's WTOL.com. And make sure to be extra careful with text messages from random phone numbers. Cybersecurity experts say a phishing scam through text is becoming increasingly popular. Now, in the past two weeks or so, I know I've personally received probably four texts like this, and I've seen posts about them on social media as well. So I know they've been running rampant. Um, what they do is they address you by name and try to get you to click on a link saying that you have a package missing or something like that. So what happens if you happen to click the link? Well, experts say there are a few things that could happen. Most likely you'll get a fake business page that looks like it's real. One person reported getting sent to a fake FedEx page and being asked for personal information. Or it could download some sort of malware on your device, which would allow scammers to hack into your personal information, which we obviously don't want. So we all know someone who loves to tell off one of those crooks, right? Well, experts say don't do that either. Don't reply to those texts because it gives them a signal that there is a real person on the other side, which makes you a valuable number for these scammers and crooks. So avoid doing that. And this is just one text message scam that's going around right now. Another one will claim that you were recommended from a for a work from home job. I got that one too. But again, you really shouldn't be clicking on those links. Just best to block the number and uh, don't click on anything. And when it comes to this packaging scam, a lot of people may actually be waiting on a package. So if you are and there's any question about where it's at, make sure you just reach out to you know, UPS or FedEx directly so you can figure that out that way. And while we're talking about spreading false information, you may have seen a recent social media post claiming there's a kidnapping in our area followed by a police chase last night. But 
Toledo police say they found no evidence to back up those claims. Variations of the post read, Ladies, be careful. About 9.30 p.m. tonight, a lady was sexually assaulted and kidnapped from Kroger's on Alexis. Police chased the suspect until they hit a pole on Jackman. Victim recovered. Truck was from Texas. But the Toledo Police Department reacted to this post on Twitter by saying, the Toledo Police Department is aware of the below post circulating on social media. Through records checks and calls to dispatch, there is no record of this incident occurring. Please be cautious with what you share on social media. And at its meeting today, Toledo City Council agreed to let golf carts be part of traffic on certain streets. City Council members voted to eliminate previous boundaries and instead allow the operation of golf carts on all city streets that have a speed limit of 35 miles per hour or less. To pass inspections, golf carts must have a number of features, including functional brakes, of course, brake lights, a horn, turn signals, seatbelts, and all of the other things you see right here on your screen. Now there is a $25 inspection fee that's due at the time of inspection and golf carts and similar vehicles must be titled and registered to the state of Ohio. Documentation of a successful inspection must also be submitted in order to get your registration and your license plate. And then of course, in addition to passing inspection, the driver must be at least 16 years old and have a valid license and children's safety and seat regulations must be followed and of course, follow all other traffic laws. And if you aren't a fan of masks, you may have to provide photographic proof that you are wearing a face covering before hopping in your next Uber. The new policy was announced today, stipulating that if a driver reports that a rider wasn't wearing a mask, the rider will have to take a selfie with one strapped on the next time they order a ride. The new requirements will roll out in the US and Canada later this month before eventually branching out to other parts of the world. And before I go, many of us could start seeing a boost in our paychecks through the end of the year. And that's because a payroll tax deferral is set to kick in today. The deferral is one of four executive orders signed by President Donald Trump on August 8th, back when talks of a second stimulus plan in Congress started to fall apart. The deferral delays the payment of employees portion of the Social Security tax, which amounts to 6.2% of a worker's gross pay. With a deferral in play, that means more money in your pocket right now. So how much is that? Well, if a person makes $30,000 per year, it's about $71.54 per check for a total of $643.85, assuming nine more pay periods this year. Double or triple those numbers if you make $60,000 or $90,000 respectively. To qualify, you must make less than $4,000 bi-weekly. But keep in mind, this is a deferral and not a tax break. Unlike stimulus checks, this money will likely have to be paid back in some form. This could mean additional withholding during the first few months of next year or a tax bill if paid back all at once. The first thing you need to do is make sure your employer is participating. The IRS issued new guidance to employers Friday addressing the responsibility in this process. That means you should check with your employer to find out whether they'll continue to withhold your portion of the social security tax or not. If they decide to defer collection, it's recommended that you try to save the additional money you'll be getting, if at all possible. And according to CNBC, President Donald Trump says he would like to see the uncollected taxes forgiven altogether if he is re-elected in November. A break like that would most likely have to pass in Congress. But that is all I have for you today. For even more on our top headlines, check us out nightly at 5, 6, and 11 on Channel 11, of course. Plus, if you'd like to see more of these updates, like this video, subscribe to our channel. You'll get a little alert to your phone whenever we pop on here in the evenings. But with all of that out of the way, I hope you have a very happy Tuesday.